Hey everybody, Dave here and thanks so much for joining me for another video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to make professional grade blade baits or as some call them vibrating lures. I'm going to be showing you step by step how I pour them and how I paint them all the way to the end and I'm going to show you how to rig them as well as how to fish them. So stick around. Okay guys, what I'm going to do today is show you how I go through and I make um, blade baits. Uh, so before we get started, just a couple of things. I just want to show you my setup, what I have here. Um, I have lead here um, and also this pot and this was graciously given to me by my brother who he is just awesome. Uh, so Larry, thank you so much. I appreciate it bro. I love you. Um, he was initially going to be doing some pouring himself years back and decided he didn't want to do it and um, so I contacted him because I wanted to get started in it. I wanted to know if I could borrow uh, his stuff to try it out and he gave it all to me. So um, I'm very blessed to have a brother like that. Um, so anyway, just want to go over a couple of things. Now this is a pour pot that I have um, that Larry gave me. It's a Lee pot. And um, let me show you some things about it. Now if you look on top here, um, what you do is you place the lead in here. And uh, I put mine on seven. And I've heard people say that for each of these numbers, um, it corresponds to a hundred of a degree. So lead melts at about 650. So if you put it at 700, um, your lead will, will stay fine. And that's what I pour everything with. I pour bullets with that. I pour jigs with that. And um, it's worked out really well for me. So let me just say a couple of things about my work area. This is actually just a router table I have in my garage. Um, I covered up my Lexon top here with a piece of plywood just to protect it. Uh, I use a spoon to scoop everything out and you should be wearing um, the proper protection for yourself. Personal um, protection equipment such as safety glasses. As you see I have a long sleeve shirt on today. Um, you can wear gloves. Uh, I tend not to um, because uh, it, I can hold on to the, the uh, <clears throat> mold uh, a lot better without the gloves and um, I just uh, have to be extremely careful but just please remember that whenever you're pouring lead it is dangerous and so you do so at your own risk all right this is not an instructional video as much as, as it is a uh, entertainment video and show you how I do it um, you really need to seek uh, professional advice before you start taking on this stuff okay so you do so at your own risk now with the disclaimer out of the way let's move on couple other things you need to need to know. Um, your cords like this should all be routed in a safe place. Don't have any extension cords on the floor or anything like that where young kids can trip on them and rip the pot off the table or a dog or something. Um, that would be disastrous. You don't want that. You make sure all your cords are tucked away and safe. Over here I have my um, uh, toaster oven that I use for um, powder coating my jigs and such. So <clears throat> that you'll need a spoon um, You need a jig of course and also um, a candle. Uh, I get these at the dollar store um, And uh, you get two for a dollar and any kind of candle is fine. You need that to, to smoke um, Your mold and I'll show you how to do that in a minute Now the uh, blanks that I'm using right here. There's two different sizes there is a ZBS, that's the smaller one, and then on this one is a ZBM, and this is the larger one. You can see the difference here. Um, I use the brass blanks. They do come in nickel, but I prefer the brass because the brass, um, I polish it up, and then I hit it with some lacquer afterwards and keeps a real nice shine, or, and it also holds the paint better than the nickel when I paint my uh, blade baits. So with that, let me uh, let me show you what else we get doing here. My lead ingots are a pound like this, and my brother was gracious, he gave me 50 pounds that he had ordered. And you just very carefully place them in the pot, just like that, we'll put a couple in there, and it won't take them long to melt down. Um, while we're waiting for them to melt, 
Um, the next thing we have to do is we have to take, this is a brand new mold, and so I'm going to be taking some denatured alcohol and cleaning up this with a Q-tip. All in here and all around, and I'll get it all nice and clean so it accepts the smoke. So let me go ahead and do that, and then uh, I'll show you how to smoke these molds so that the lead uh, releases a lot easier. Okay, so after the mold has had a chance to dry, I just blow on it. The alcohol evaporates quite quickly. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to smoke this. And so what I'm going to do is take a candle. And I got these candles at the dollar store. I get You get two for a buck. Um, just any kind of candle is good. I get the unscented. And um, I use that for two different things. And I'll sh I use it to uh, put a little bit in the pot. So it pulls the dross off and allows me to scoop it out. Um, easier. The, the dross is the uh, garbagey stuff that comes out of the lead and uh, you don't want that in your mold. You want the good stuff. That's what's nice about a bottom pour pot like this is you're taking off all the, the, the pure lead because uh, the, the dross rises to the top. Sometimes when you use a scoop you got to make sure it's all clean but this is uh, you'll have a lot less problems with it. And uh, you know if you want to get into this again my brother graciously gave me this stuff but a pot like this is about $70 um, the lead is about a dollar, dollar fifty a pound, and then your molds. These were thirty-five dollars for the molds, and then your hooks and different stuff. But you know, when you consider that blade baits, I just looked on Amazon today, are running upwards of eight dollars a piece, um, and you realize you can make a hundred blade baits for a fraction of, you know, the cost of buying them individually. You know, it it certainly pays for itself. Plus. I, again, I use the pot, like I said, to, to do my bullet molds and my jigs. And um, once you get into it, and there's so much more you can do. You can pour sinkers and all that. But anyway, back to um, back to the blade baits. So what I want to do is, is you want to take a candle like this. I've already lit this. And you want to put it underneath the mold like this until you get that black smoke. You know what I'm talking about on the candle. All right. Just like that, as you hold it close, you'll see see that black smoke that's coming off there. You sort of choke out the flame. And you're just going to do that to every cavity. See, that? see the difference in that? You want to get everywhere in there. And this really does a good job of helping that lead release. So let me finish up this mold, and then um, we get into uh, the pouring. All right, now the uh, jig is smoked up, and that's what it should look like. And you don't have to do this every time. This is good for probably 50 pours um, before you'll have to smoke it again. So what I do is I just take a very fine little bit of wax like this and drop it in. And you'll see that there's some smoke comes off of that. That's why you need proper ventilation. Okay? And what that's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to scoop off that dross a whole lot easier. There it is there. And I'll just take off a little more. See, it doesn't, it doesn't allow it to stick to the spoon then either. Okay. So that's pretty clean. Now what I'm going to do is... I'm going to pour, what I like to do is without putting anything in the jigs, uh, whether it's jig heads or bullet molds or everything else, I like to just line up, there's a little nipple under here, and what I like to do is I like to just, when you lift this up, it'll come out, I like to just pour um, this mold and get it hot. I like to do that about five times without anything in it, and I take the lead and put it back in the pot to melt again. So with a regular round head jig I just pour it in the cavities but this will run out the bottom so all I do is I just hold it here and I just fill up the cavities like this and I just let it set a couple seconds there that that lead hardens almost instantly and then what I do is I just take a pair of pliers and just pull that off just like that, put it back in my lead pot, and I'll do that a couple of three times, 
And the reason I pour it all continuous is so it's easy to get out. So I just pour that in. I'll do it a couple more times. And that mold will be nice and hot, ready to take a pour. The other thing you can do is set the mold on top of your pot, um, but it takes a little longer to do that. I like to uh, pour right away, so I just heat it up this way using the lead itself. And just put it right back on top. Make sure you don't drop them in. You don't ever want to drop it in. You just want to gently place them in and let it let it melts right away okay so now what we'll do is we'll lay out the blades and then we'll pour a couple so all I need to do is take the bl the blades and they they lock right in the mold just like this Precision cut, so it just it just they stack right in there like that. There we go. And two of the smaller ones for right here. One there. And one there. You want that snap sound. You heard it, okay? Now let's pour some lead. And I want a continuous pour, as you can see. I want those leads connected. You'll see when it dries, it's almost, or whether when it, it solidifies, you can see it almost just about now. Now I can open that mold. And you can see there's the baits. Now I just have to take them out with a pair of pliers. And by pulling one, they all come out. And that's what I want. I just set them on the wood and I'll place in some more to pour. You have to be careful because this is, is hot now. That's what you want. You want that click sound. You just grab it like this with a pair of pliers. Comes right out. Put it on the stack to cool. Easy peasy. The other things I use the candles for is I just being this mold's hot, you can see, I just put a little bit of wax on there and it really helps the hinges to work smoothly, okay? You don't want to get this in the cavity though, just on the hinge, okay? Okay, we've got just two more blades to do. We've done a hundred blades um, in about a half hour, a little over a half hour, I would estimate goes pretty darn quick. Get that nice snap sound. And I'm only left with the smaller blades. Let's open it up. That's what they look like. I just grab the screws right here. Sprues and take them out. Okay. So what I've got here is a pile of blade baits. We'll let them cool and they break right off and then we'll be ready for paint and assembly. Let me show you how easy it is to separate these once they're all poured and that's the, one of the reasons I like this to connect all the sprues on top is so that it gives me a good handle like that. Now all I do is take a bait like this work it back and forward a couple of times and there you go. I might want to just touch that up with a file which I'll probably do to give a nice smooth edge and that's it. Just set them down, do the next one, next one, do them all just like that. It's very simple. 
And then this goes back in the pot, this lead. And there's my baits. So after I break the sprues off, you get a little bit of sharp edge on the end here. I like to take a file and just draw it backwards because the lead is so soft. It's just to smooth it off, take all the rough edges off, and I get a nice, nice smooth finish. There you go. So what I've done on, on these is I've given them a white coat and then um, a yellow and then a little bit of green right down tapering down to the belly here and what you want to do is you want to set them up so you can do the backs like this and then when you flip them you can just turn the cardboard and they'll be lined up again so um, I just did this side here as you can see I have this side to do so I'm just gonna put a green right down there so what I was saying is I put them like this I just flip them over I just set them with the heat gun and then it's always easier to do the paint from the back side. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get these flipped over and then I will just turn the cardboard around. Okay, so now I'll give it a touch of green. Right on the back there and going down the belly. Very light. What I do to clean the colors is I get a squirt bottle like this, a condiment bottle. Uh, it comes two for a dollar down at the dollar store. And I just squirt it in there like that. Spray it. There we go. Ready for next color. Nice and clean. So what I do once they're ready to lacquer, I put the eyes on. I don't use any super glue because the lacquer will lay in there and help seal everything up. So once I had the painting done and the eyes on, I give it a single coat of clear lacquer. It dries in about an hour to the touch and it takes about 24 hours to harden completely. But it really creates a beautiful luster as you can see. Okay now that we've got the baits painted up and this this one here I used a uh, uh, perch pattern uh, my own designs like in between tiger stripe and a perch pattern you can um, cover these in many different colors. You can be creative and just have fun with this. Uh, you know, it's not a science as more as it is uh, being creative and having fun. You know, fish, you have no idea what fish are going to strike at any one time. Uh, that's why we change colors so often. That's why we change actions uh, and, all, and lures. So, um, you know, just because um, you want to make it fancy, make it fancy. You, you don't want to make it fancy, don't. Keep it plain. Uh, I've got uh, different sets of all these and so um, that's what makes fishing fun. So anyway let's talk a little bit about the baits about finalizing them. Uh, the next step after you paint them is you're going to want to attach your hooks. Now the hook sizes that I use for the larger bait which this is um, I like to use a size 6 hook and for the smaller baits I like to use a size 8 hook. The reason for that is this, if you put a size 6 hook, which a lot of people recommend, say just use six, size 6 on all the baits I've, I've read. So um, what will happen is on the smaller ones, you can you see here, these hooks don't quite touch. But on the smaller bait they will, and you can easily get them uh, tangled together in a cast or retrieve, or especially if you're jigging, and it's going to mess up your action and your hookups. So I recommend going with a size 8 hook for the smaller baits, size 6 for the larger. As far as the uh, attachment rings, I use a size 4. It's a little bit bigger, it's a little easier to work with, and it allows me to get it on the lure and on the hooks a little easier. 
You can go as small as three, but again, um, you know, it's a little more difficult to work them in things. And make sure I would, if you're doing any more than just a few of these, that you make sure you have a good set of snap ring pliers to be able to take care of these snap rings. Um, I did uh, in this batch 100 lures, which means I had 200 uh, hooks to attach. And I'm glad I had the snap ring pliers. It would have been uh, really difficult without them. So they're cheap. You can get them eBay, Amazon fairly cheaply or wherever, and uh, they will make your life a whole lot easier. Now, let me share with you a little bit about the action. This area here is where all the lead is on the bait. Okay, above that are three holes. You can see them right here. And those holes um, control the action of the bait. The farther forward that you tie off the, to your line, the more subtle the action of the bait. It will, it will have more of a, just a, a wobbly, slight wobble. In the, in the middle is immediate action, and the farther back creates the most and the quickest wobble. So um, you can actually, what's great about these baits is you can actually change up how they perform underwater and in your retrieves just by moving them from one hole to the next. If you've got an aggressive bite, move them all the way to the back. If you, you know, you're know you fishing in slower water, colder water, um, maybe move them forward to the front. Experiment with them a little bit. Uh, the thing that you're going to want to use to attach these baits are dual lock snaps. And uh, I use size 1 for this. I am using 8 pound line, so the size 1 is more than adequate pound test to handle that. You do not want to tie these baits off directly to the, your line. You want to have that duo snap. That will do two things. It will prevent your line from being cut on the, on the sharp edges of the bait, and it will also give more action to the bait, allowing it to freely move back and forth. Now, as far as fishing these baits, there's several ways you can do that. You can actually uh, drop these and use them like a jig all over a rock pile or a brush pile, and um, just give them a sharp jig forward, and then on a tight line, let them settle back down again. Uh, that's what's so great about these and makes them more versatile even crankbaits. Crankbaits, as you know, even uh, long lip crankbaits, you have to crank them fairly um, hard in order to get them down to the depth they're working. And if you want to work down at 30 feet um, running a crankbait, that's extremely difficult to do. But these, um, you can run them at any speed, pretty much at any depth, just by um, determining how quickly they sink and how fast you're retrieving. And so uh, the, that's one way you can fish them is uh, jerking them vertically over brush pile or rock pile. You can also cast and retrieve them from boat or shore. You can also troll these. So there's a lot of ways in which you can use these. They're extremely versatile baits. And if you don't have any of these in your tackle box, I would encourage you to uh, start making your own. So as you know, these baits can be extremely expensive, as I shared with you, running six, eight dollars. And uh, but once you get set up with uh, a pouring system, that initial cost, after that initial cost, you will be uh, be able to turn out baits um, for a fraction of that price. So everyone, thanks so much for taking the time to hang out with us today. Uh, to give up some time out of your busy schedule to hang out with us. And maybe you've learned a little bit. And uh, I hope this content was helpful and enjoyable to you. And if it was, I'd really encourage you to take the time to subscribe to our channel. Make sure you click that not little notification bell as well and select all so that you'll be up to date on all the uh, videos as soon as they come out. You know, I'd like to just leave you with a, a thought for today. And that is this. You know, each one of us was built to create. You know, whether it's building blade baits or jigs or cooking or creating music, uh, each one of us inside of us has this yearning to create something. Something we can be proud of. Something that, that we can have satisfaction in. And you know what? That creation factor put inside of us was given to us, I believe, by God. He said, let us make man in our own image when he was talking in the beginning, when everything was created. And you know, uh, we are created in the image of God. 
And the one thing I want to leave with you today is this, that God doesn't make junk. You know, I know there's some of you probably watching this video right now that feel like you're not worth much, that feel like, you know, um, you're a mistake. Um, you know, I remember being told uh, when I was younger that I wasn't planned by my parents, but that doesn't mean I was a mistake. You see, God has a plan for you and a plan for me. If only we'll just follow Him in His direction, we can find it. You know, the Bible says this in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. You see, God designed us with a plan in mind. He designed us with a purpose in mind. And the fact of it is, His love for us is so great that no matter what we've done to damage that relationship with God, He will always welcome us back. He will forgive us of our sins. He will cleanse us and He will make us in the type of people that He wants us to be if we'll only surrender our heart to Him. You see, God has a plan for us. In fact, He put that plan in motion years ago before you and I even existed. He sent Jesus Christ to die on a cross because He loved us that much, because we were His creation, and He wanted to assure that we would be able to have a relationship with Him. He gave us Jesus Christ that our sins might be forgiven, that we might be able to get back into a right relationship, that no matter how broken we might feel through our sin or through our past, that we would have an avenue to get back to God. And you know, if you're not sure how to get there, if you're not sure how to take those next steps in trying to develop that relationship with God, He's made it really easy for you. And so have I. I've written a short booklet for you to be able to walk you through a little bit about my life, a little about where I was, and how God rescued me the same way He wants to rescue each and every one of us. You know, it takes you through the scriptures, and it shares with you not only how you can find forgiveness and start a new life with God, but also how you can walk with Him on a daily basis, how you can take the next steps in a right relationship with Him. So guys, check out the book. It's in the description below. It's called Growing Deep. It's yours free. It doesn't require any email or any other information to capture. I've got several books listed down there as well about how I went through cancer, how I went through deep depression, and how God healed me of both as well. So check them all out. Uh, they're there for you. They're free. And it's my gift to you for hanging out with us today and also as an opportunity that you might have the peace and the joy in your life that I found in knowing Jesus Christ as well. So guys, until next time, remember, God loves you more than you could ever know. So until then, God bless you and get outdoors.